I'm Alyssa Bader, and I'm a PhD student in Dr. Philip Awadala's lab, and I'm interested in how our blood ages. I'm currently using data from Ontario, BC, Alberta, Quebec, and the Atlantic provinces. Join me as I give you a quick look into our research where we use population health studies to explore what characterizes the healthy aging of our blood. Age is a primary risk factor for many chronic diseases. And here I'm just showing you a few examples of that where I've plotted the incidence rates for four common diseases across age groups. And so we see that these incidence rates increase as age increases as well. As we get older, our cells accumulate different types of damage, for example, DNA damage. And when this happens, our cells will try to mitigate that damage, which can be done through several pathways, for example, by going into cell arrest, which essentially means shutting down the cell. The cycle of cellular damage and response to that damage creates this feedback cycle, but eventually our cells cannot keep up which is when we start to see more prominent effects of aging, such as a limited capacity to generate new cells. Collectively, these are known as the nine hallmarks of aging. We are made up of many different types of cells, which can age at different rates. Therefore, my research focuses on how our blood ages. Blood is a tissue made up of many components and cell types. All of the cells in our blood originate from hematopoietic stem cells, which differentiate into many different cell types that have important functions in oxygen transport, blood clotting, and immunity. We often measure different traits of these blood cells in routine blood tests because they can tell us a lot about our health. But as we age, the composition of our blood cells change and they don't function as well. Therefore, the overarching goal of my research is to understand what factors contribute to how our blood ages, and more specifically, what factors contribute to the healthy aging of blood. To answer this question, I'm investigating genetic factors, such as inherited DNA variants. I'm also using functional genomics to find what genes are turned up or down and how those changes might be impacting how our blood ages. To answer these questions, I'm using data and blood samples from the CANPATH cohort. The CANPATH cohort is a very rich resource because it allows us to integrate different types of phenotypic information, such as health and lifestyle, with biologic information from blood samples. To understand what factors contribute to the healthy aging of blood, we first need to define what that means. We use a risk score derived from complete blood count, or CBC, data as a measure of blood health. The variables that go into the risk score are white blood cell count, platelet count, hematocrit, red blood cell distribution width, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, and mean corpuscular volume. These are measures that are commonly taken when you get a blood test. And the main point to remember here is that a low CBC risk score is considered healthy. Here we have the distribution of the CBC risk score across a subset of CAMPATH participants. About 30,000 are from the Ontario Health Study, and the remaining 17,000 are from Cartagen. The risk score is on the x-axis, and the y-axis has the proportion of participants with each score colored by age group. The individuals I am most interested in are those in the top left. These are the oldest individuals in the cohort with the lowest risk scores. We refer to these individuals as the old healthy group. One hypothesis to answer what is keeping their blood healthy is that there's some sort of protective mechanism mitigating the effects of aging in these individuals. So their blood is different from old unhealthy individuals. To test this hypothesis, we need to compare these two groups. A second hypothesis is that there is some sort of healthy aging mechanism, meaning old healthy blood is the same as young healthy blood. Similarly, we need to compare these two groups to test this hypothesis. Finally, if the second hypothesis is true, we think that there might also be an accelerated aging mechanism. So we've selected individuals from these four groups and measured gene expression in their blood samples. The goal is to identify genes that are involved in protective or healthy aging mechanisms. And we're starting to see some really interesting results. 
We expect protective genes to be different in the old healthy group because we think these genes are helping them stay healthy. This could mean they are always expressed higher or lower. For example, genes that inhibit inflammation are turned up in old healthy individuals. This is an example of a protective mechanism. Other protective genes have expression that is somewhere in between young healthy and old unhealthy, meaning they're not as healthy as young healthy, but are still healthier than old unhealthy. An example is genes that are associated with high blood pressure. Finally, healthy aging genes are those that are different between old healthy and old unhealthy, but not different between old healthy and young healthy. One example is that old healthy and young healthy individuals have lower expression of genes that inhibit DNA repair. There are many other genes that we have classified as being involved in protective or healthy aging mechanisms. We now know that these genes are turned up or down depending on how our blood ages. Now, we're looking at what is controlling how much up or down these genes are. We think that our inherited DNA might play a role, as well as how our DNA is packed into our cells. Ultimately, my aim is to understand how we can age healthier so we can try to prevent age-related diseases altogether. Thank you for watching, and thank you to all the members of the Aladal Lab, especially those highlighted who have contributed directly to this work.